this thing is two years old, I bet you it is 90% different now. There's just so many outlets. That same conference I went to in the summer, we had uh, the media director for one of the political campaigns. And so we're, he's, he's talking about their use of social media. Well, when we, when we show the candidate on Facebook, he's wearing a tie. But when we put him on Instagram, he's in a polo shirt. Hmm, what does that mean? I have no idea. But there are differences in your audience for social media, for how you use them or how you don't. Because it all comes back to equitable application of standards. Everyone in this organization is treated the same, that we have equal opportunities to excel, to participate, to try out, to do things. We have values-based leaders. We have servant leadership. We have values above reproach. Do Americans put military on a pedestal? That is where that view comes from. We have a higher expectation and we have a trust in what the military does. We represent the brand. Now last summer I also spent some time with the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine. The Air Force Science Board was hosting a conference there uh, at the request of the Chief of Staff of the Air Force on communicating with millennials. Um, this is it. I highly recommend you download it and keep it. There's some great stuff in here. I'll pass it around if you want to take a look at it. I don't recommend you buy it because it's like 60 bucks to buy it in paper, but you can download it free. Um, but they had the head of communications there for Goodyear, for four or five PR firms, for numbers of organizations as they talked about their internal communications channels. Because who do we tell first? Who's our first audience? Us, internal. What do, who do soldiers want to hear it from first? And please excuse me if I just say soldiers, because I mean all y'all. I grew up in Pennsylvania, so at least I don't say yuns anymore, but y'all. And that is, they want to hear it in person, in a formation, from their immediate supervisor. And they want it to be accurate. It goes to the brand. What is the brand? What are our values? Part of our discussion in that conference went to what are Air Force values? Should we have added another one? Do we know who we are? Because a step behind brand is identity. Who are we? What do we stand for? What have we always stood for? I can tell you, from, if you know nothing about the military and all you watch are recruiting commercials, what do you know about the Army? Why would you join the Army? Army strong. Army strong, get money for college. Why do you join the Marine Corps? Exactly, to be a Marine and to be cool. Why do we join the Navy? To see the world. See the world? And the Air Force? The most prestigious. To live that cush life. <laughs> Okay, well you have Chief of Staff of the Air Force, live in dorms, Ch Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Mark Walsh saying these are my heroes with all of them lined up behind him. Now, do you want to see your senior boss in all of these things? You know, I think you want to see all of them, you want to see all of the airmen and you want to see the variety of jobs they have. Spencer Stone, did we ever see what his job was and all of the stories about him? He drives an ambulance, a uh, medic at Lodges Field in the Azores. So you ride for the brand. I got this book on cowboy ethics from one of the chaplains on the Army staff. Um, it was written by a Wall Street investor who after the big crash in 2008 decided that his whole career field needed a little refresher in basic ethics. You know, some things aren't for sale. Our ethics are not for sale. We have definite, we know when to draw the line. What we will say, what we won't say, how far we'll go. We don't leak like they do in some other federal agencies. We make promises, we keep them, and if you wear the uniform, that is your brand and you ride for the brand. 